Hey guys, what's up? I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood colorist, and the day has finally came. The Hanser has reached out to me to make a review for their plugin, and I'm pretty excited to test it out because I have heard from other colorists who bought the Hanser like long time, I think two or three years ago. The reviews from them are pretty good, so I'm very eager to check it out for myself. Just so happened the team from the Hanser has reached out, so I will give my opinions, my reviews on this. So I've been testing it out for a bit the last few days, and I feel that I have a pretty solid opinion on the plugin so let's get into it and for those of you out there that are not familiar with Dehancer basically it's like a plugin in Premiere Pro or After Effects you can install it and use it on the software so you can add effects and adjustments that the software itself doesn't have built in I had a bit of trouble installing Dehancer into my DaVinci Resolve but let's leave that for the end of the video so I'll make a conclusion at the end. Alright, so today we have a few clips that I picked out to test the Hanser on. Some are a bit brighter, some are a bit darker. And mostly I want to judge the skin tone and the overall look. Like for these without skin tone, I want to judge whether I can use the Hanser on this kind of shots. Whether it matches the other shots. And for these type of shots, it's like pushing the highlights and pushing the shadows. So I also want to test on that and I'm going to show you where the Hanser lacks in terms of the compatibility with highlights and stuff like that. So I have two notes for today. The first one is a CST which I turn off right now and the second one is a Dehancer. I'll let you know why I use the CST instead of Dehancer's own log profiles. So let's start with Dehancer. I'm going to go into my effects and then pull in Dehancer Pro 6.2.0 which I installed earlier and drag it in. So the first thing that we see is there is a profile already built in which I find quite annoying. Yes, because if I pull in an effect, I don't really want this specific profile but it's preset to this profile and I can't really remove it. So that is one of the things that I feel annoyed by. So I have to go in and manually turn off the things that I don't need. So I hope that the answer can like turn everything off by default. And then so I don't need to do it every time. So let's try their source. So source is going to be choose camera. And I'm going vendor. This is from Blackmagic Design. And the camera is a Pocket 6K. Format is film. Gen 5, I think this is a 400 ISO. Well, let's try the 3002. Okay, the 3002 looks nicer. And that's uh, one of the things that you, you can carry on in your practice, which is just go with whatever looks nicer. It doesn't have to be whatever was shot on the day. So for exposure, temperature, tint, everything, I feel it's pretty, it's pretty good already. And I forgot to talk about this scene. So this is... A setting which is like in a 19 I don't know 80s 90s yeah it's a bit vintage so I figured that this is a good clip to test for the Hanser especially their skin tones inside and everything so moving on to the Dehancer software there's a film so to to use it you have to enable it first and then this is a Kodak Vision 3 so there's like a whole lot of options to choose from. I don't know how many, but it looks like 50 options of different, like if if you know your stuff about film, I guess this is like a gold mine to you because you can very easily switch between the film colors. So I'm a bit, I'm not that into film, but I know like Kodak Go is good for sunsets and Portra, Kodak Portra. But today let's go with a Portra. Let's go with a Portra 400. I I kind of like this look. And then I'm gonna move down to film compression. I'm gonna enable it, and it compresses the highlights, which is something that I I don't really like the effect of it, because yeah, it's a case by case scenario. But I don't really like what it does. 
compared to my way of preserving highlights. And moving on to expand, which adjusts the black point, and also if you go reduce the black point, it becomes a fade. But let's just add a bit of yeah shadows and the white point. Wow. Yeah, let's go back a bit. Okay, I think I'm not going to touch this. Okay, and then moving on, we'll go to print. And this is also one of the more interesting features. We can choose the kind of film print that we want to go with. So Senior Film Log is going to be very log. Oh, sorry. I have to enable it. Yeah. Senior Film Log is going to have the log look. But there's a 3513 and the 2383. Yeah, this one is the most popular one, I think, the 2383 Kodak. And there's also this glossy paper. So I think I'm just going to go with the 2383. This looks good. And I'm going to actually reset the black point. Because, yeah, I don't want to go with that. And then I can target white. Oh, so I can like make it whiter and also make it warmer. And also for the exposure. So it, it kind of mimics the way you scan film, I believe. These kind of tools are not existent in Da Vinci's own built-in effects. So I guess this is where you get your money's worth. So you get this kind of print film settings that you can adjust. Toner contrast It's interesting. And then, yes, I love this color density. So you can increase the saturation, but it's not going to be vibrant. So it's kind of the same like you're using HSL and you isolate the saturation layer. So this gives kind of the same effect, which adds the color density, but it's not going to be too vibrant. It's different from the saturation knob that you find in Resolve. So I love this too, saturation. Oh, sorry, color density. And moving on, we have our film grain. So this one is probably one of the effects that you would want to use when you're using the Hanser also. So this one is pretty coarse. Let's try to adjust it. So they don't have presets like in the built-in Da Vinci film grain. And that is something I think, I think they can easily incorporate that. So, you, But you still can adjust the size of the grain by yourself. But this is still too big for me. Like one is the minimum amount. Can we reduce the amount? Looking good. Oh, now it's zero. And shadows. Yeah, so you can adjust the type of grain that you want in the shadows. Like how much grain you want in the shadows. If, or if, look at the shadows here. I can kind of remove all the grain in the shadow. Then the shadow become clean. Or... I can remove the grain in the highlight and then the highlight looks cleaner. So that's pretty interesting. And these you don't find in the built-in DaVinci Resolve. And I feel that these are pretty useful. Just, yeah, it's lacking a bit of the presets that you can find in DaVinci. And then moving on to halation, you have the limiter which adjusts the area that you want to affect. And also the local diffusion global diffusion see it's not giving me much of an effect so i don't really know how to comment on that so impact is i think impact is the one that is like the threshold tool in da vinci resolve so if i increase the impact then you see a face good gets red if i decrease it then it gets a little bit less yeah but i think the tools here are a little bit lesser than the ones that is built into DaVinci. I kind of like DaVinci's halation tool more because I can adjust the saturation of it, the effect of it, the glow of it. But okay, maybe it's in the bloom. Let's check that out. So for the bloom, turn it off and turn it on. Yeah, see that's that's a pretty nice bloom. Okay, so I guess their halation and bloom is equivalent to Da Vinci's own halation too. So there's like a ton of settings which I can't say that I'm very familiar with, but usually you just play around and see what looks good. So Amplify here is adjusting the amount of bloom and I'll just leave it at the default at 50. Saturation of the bloom. That's interesting. And the impact of the bloom 
and also there's a vignette too but yeah you can adjust the size of the vignette and everything like that the feather so that's pretty interesting but okay let's just leave it on for now and then i have a film breath which is kind of like a stutter that is present in a normal film so okay this is something extra that the Hanser has that Da Vinci doesn't which adds to the filmic look and there's also a gate weave which is yeah the camera shake a bit of jitter in the footage which gives a more believable feeling that this was shot on film and I don't know it looks to me quite good it looks like it was shot on film I kind of dig this look so there are more stuff over here like a false color so I can see that their skin is in a good place. Pink is where you want to be. And let's turn that off. There's an output of total impact. So this is like the opacity of the layer. So I'm using the Blackmagic's technical LUT. So I have to put it at 100%. If not, it's going to look a bit lock-ish. Okay, so and there's a LUT generator which is pretty interesting because you can just export the LUT very easily. So we do a 33 point cube. It only retains the color data but not the effects. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. And then lastly, you have options for quality, normal, fast, high, slow. Let's test this out on my M1 Mac. Does it play back? Okay, just barely, like it's at 15, 16 frames. What about normal? Okay, a bit of improvement, 18 frames. Yeah, I just leave that high. And then you have your license info and your profiles. So this is the look that I created with Dehancer. And I'm doing everything in just one note. So it's pretty interesting. Like you can just use one note to do everything to create a film look. So what do you think about this look overall? You know, give me give me some feedback in the comment and I would like to know what you think. So let me show you why I decided to add a CST in front, which I will show you in this clip, which is very push. So I'll just copy the grid from here. But I know that this is uh, not from Blackmagic. This one is from a Sony FX3. Oh, sorry, Sony A7 IV. And let me close my clips. So in the choose camera, okay, I'm going to go Sony. In camera, I'm going to go Alpha A7 IV. And format, let's do 32. Nope. Do 800. Okay, it looks the same. And it looks a bit dark right now. So let me increase the exposure a bit. Yeah, I guess this is fine. And like, can you see what happens? Yeah, over here, it totally ruins the whole video if I'm using their built-in technical LUT. So this is, I don't know why this is happening, but somehow when I use this on this project, this particular project, yeah, this ugly, I don't even know what to call it. It's not bending, it's not, it's not anything, it's just, it's not the right technical LUT. And I have asked other people who use the answer and they said that they usually won't do this input transform right here. They would usually use a CST to do the transform and just set this as, uh, let's deselect and let's just choose Rec 709. Okay, so it's going to be locked, but let's turn on my CST from a Sony S-Log3 Cine S-Log3 okay let's set okay and let me turn on the CSC and you can see that it's much better it doesn't have that gunkiness so let's reduce the exposure first and this is pretty pretty nice actually using the CST this is one of the feedback that I can give to Dehancer which is your technical LUT doesn't really work your technical transform but it it works on the black magic for some reason but it doesn't work on the sony and let me try to apply this look to the other footages so i'm just going to select all and replace the grade and it looks pretty good i'm kind of happy with it 
this one I might increase the exposure oh it's breaking again see I can't even increase the exposure it's gonna break but on my original grade like I can do everything very easily without breaking the image so I don't know it's pretty hard to recommend using the enhancer only without doing any other adjustment but that's another thing with the enhancer like while using the enhancer you don't actually have to use all of their settings like someone who used the enhancer told me that they only use this film print like other stuff they don't really touch it maybe sometimes film grain yeah so you don't have to turn everything on maybe just pick and choose the things that you want to use so i think the more beneficial functions is, is probably this film stock and then you also can choose this film print and another thing that i would like to use is also the film grain where you can adjust the grain in the shadow midtones and highlights that's very interesting but the halation and the bloom i will still use back the ones that are built into davinci resolve so pick and choose the things that you feel is useful the enhancer is a pretty pretty nice software to have in the back of your pocket in case you want to create some very nice filmic uh, prints and stocks very easily very quickly because honestly where else can you find this many film stocks that is available with just one click so that's where i guess that you can get your money's worth and to talk a bit about the installation process actually it, it has something to do with the activation codes on the windows i had a bit of trouble just to be totally transparent but when i switched to the mac it works just fine i don't have to do any troubleshooting at all so to conclude this video i guess like i said the answer is a pretty useful tool to have at the back of your pocket but if you don't have it it's not that big of a deal it's not a need to have it's definitely a really convenient thing to have and if you want to support the channel you can get it from the link in the description all right guys so that's it for this video and i hope you learned something new in this video if you did drop me a like and i'll see you guys in the next one bye